Hello, I'm Dr. Leslie Miller from Tampa, Florida, and a new regenerative medicine treatment center being opened there. The topic of my presentation today is on stem cell and gene therapy, or as we refer to it, regenerative medicine, particularly for the field of heart failure. The use of stem cells and now more recently gene therapy is really a relatively new concept in the approach to heart failure. We've spent about 10 years learning a lot of lessons using bone marrow primarily as the source of stem cells for treating acute myocardial infarction. A relatively logical first start because of its broad global morbidity and mortality. The lessons I think we've learned from bone marrow have been that it has not been as effective as we might have thought. We've used subfractions, we've used all the mononuclear cells and had variable results, but again, almost exclusively in acute myocardial infarction. Data reported just this spring, however, has shown that if you use bone marrow uh, for the treatment of stable heart failure, whether it's ischemic or non-ischemic, the results are quite encouraging. There's very clear data that there is a very significant decline in the number and function of stem cells from the bone marrow, and so it's led to a real departure in many areas of heart failure therapy with stem cells away from bone marrow and new sources. One of the newest sources is very paradoxic, it's the abdominal fat. There's data suggesting that 500 to as much as 2,000 times more stem cells reside in the abdominal fat than are in the bone marrow. And data would suggest that those cells remain quite functional even into advanced age. There have been a number of trials, as usual, conducted in Europe that have now been initiated in the United States testing these so-called adipose-derived stem cells for the treatment of heart failure. But it's gone a long way from just that as a source. We've really, one of the most important uh, new understandings is that we have previously felt that we could only use the patient's own cells, or so-called autologous, and now have moved to an understanding that there is a particular type of stem cell referred to as the mesenchymal stem cell, which is critical in the area of cardiovascular disease because it leads to the, the generation of skeletal muscle, cardiac myocytes, endothelium, and smooth muscle. And so it's particularly important new cell type, but its greatest important is that it does not express antigens on its surface, which would be recognized as foreign and therefore referred to as immune privileged. This is a very unique type of cell but comes from a number of sources. There are MSCs, as we refer to them, in the bone marrow, but a lot of work going on deriving them from other sources. The trials to date using this allogeneic MSC cell have been incredibly encouraging with no real signs of rejection or adverse effects. And it's allowed us to go back now, instead of treating a patient who might be 70 years of age with ischemic heart failure, to using an ideal donor of these MSCs from a 20-year-old perfectly healthy person. So we're real hopeful and it really is a marker of how much progress that a trial has just been initiated of 1,700 patients, phase three, meaning if it's successful, it will go to commercialization and a really a dramatic step forward in the field. There are a number of other new cell types and new sources, uh, umbilical cords, placenta, a lot of attempts trying to overcome the effects of aging and get as immature young cells as possible. Not anything related to embryonic, but umbilical cord and placental post-delivery. Uh, There's a lot of progress in some other areas that are quite astounding. The work showing that we can now use the addition of several transcription factors, as few as three or four, and transform a skin fibroblast to a functioning cardiomyocyte. Uh, this sounds rather Star Wars, but in fact, the trial has been a phase two completed with a CE mark in Europe, and now the phase three trial is beginning in Europe, and the phase 2B here in the United States, a trial called C-Cure of this really unparalleled development in uh, genetic engineering. And the last new source is really also a very big landmark uh, in our understanding, and that is that every organ in the body actually has its own resident progenitor cell. It's very clear to us that when we transplant cells into the heart, they don't last for months and years, they last for hours and days. 
And what they actually do is to release a number of paracrine factors which then stimulate the native or resident host organ to produce their cells. So there are clearly resident cardiac lineage specific cells that are activated by when we give other types of stem cells or even direct gene uh, administration. And those cells have gone into clinical trial. And again, there's a phase 2B 274 patient trial called All-Star about to begin. But the final part of regenerative medicine, while most people would recognize stem cell therapy as the predominant form of regeneration uh, of the heart or other vessels, is gene therapy. Right now, there are six independent genes that are in clinical trial, largely enhancing cardiac contractility, circa 2A to SDF to neuregulin to adenylcyclase, and these trials are really very, very promising. One good example is this SDF or stromal-derived factor one, which has uh, just completed a 90-patient trial called Stop Heart Failure and a new trial of retrograde delivery uh, that will really change, I think, the focus of our delivery of these uh, substances uh, because it can be given uh, with a coronary sinus occlusion, with total safety and total perfusion of the entire heart with excellent transfection. So the future looks uh, rather astounding. We think that there's quite a difference when you compare stem cell or gene therapy to conventional drug therapy. And there are not many new drugs on the horizon, unfortunately, with much promise in the area of advanced heart failure. In contrast to drug therapy, stem cells and genes have no hemodynamic effect. They don't add yet another medication. They don't have drug-drug interaction. They don't have drug intolerance. And it's a single point of delivery of care. And there's minimal risk to the patient of the delivery of these products. And so I think that you're going to see stem cell and gene therapy play a very significant role as an alternative to transplantation and mechanical devices for these people, the largest percentage of whom are between optimized medical therapy and still symptomatic and not ready for those ultra-advanced therapies. So a lot of progress, a lot of enthusiasm, and a lot of clinical trials going. As I'd like to say, the future of uh, cardiovascular therapies, regenerative medicine, and the future is here. I think this International Academy of Cardiology meeting is really an extraordinarily important meeting and one that is applicable to physicians and cardiologists of all disciplines. Uh, certainly, we've become uh, much more focused in our own specific area of expertise, but I think that this, meant, this meeting gives a very broad uh, program with some extraordinarily uh, new information that I think is of interest and of value to all those who attend this meeting. It's a constant learning. The amount of new information coming at us is really astounding and uh, even as my training has evolved, I think if we don't stay good students and really take advantage when people have spent so much time bringing together the experts from around the world that uh, these are the ways that we have to stay up to date and, uh, and these meetings really make that possible.